Now we're going to start talking about memory. So the most important thing about memory is the deeply personal nature of our memories and how that shapes our sense of self. And the Pixar movie Inside Out is one of the best depictions of this, where the young character there has these pivotal events in their life uh, that form these kind of memory islands, these key events. She returns to those, you know, in times of difficulty, and they sort of form this foundation for who are you? What is your identity? And and really, that's what memory does for us, is it provides the the specific context for thinking about who am I as a person? What do I value? Uh, what are the most cherished experiences? And, you know, we just really... We really need these memories as ways of identifying our own personal uh, self. In the scientific objective uh, understanding of memory, all this sepia toned kind of nostalgia is not really addressed. And we get down to some of the basic facts here. So uh, as Morpheus tells us, in fact, all this nostalgia, all this amazing subjective you know uh, importance of memory boils down to synaptic weight changes and this is exactly what we saw in the learning chapter that uh, every uh, form of learning in the brain that is long lasting is supported by these synaptic changes uh, the the change in the number of AMPA receptors across a synapse Everything that you have as these amazing subjective experiences from that objective outside view, it's just synapses. Oh boy. So that's kind of mind blowing, right? That's why Morpheus is telling us this and not, you know, Mr. Rogers. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's really hard to understand uh, how that could be true, but uh, everything in science tells us that that is the case. And furthermore, this little tiny part of the brain, the hippocampus, is the most important place where those synaptic weights change to form our new episodic memories. And so everybody probably has heard about this case of H.M., who lost his hippocampus due to surgery and epilepsy and has missed out on this whole life of episodic memories. Everything that, that otherwise he would have learned over his you know, 50 years of life since, since losing that hippocampus had never formed. And so uh, this tiny little part of your brain, relatively speaking, compared to the rest of the cortex, is amazingly responsible for so much of our subjective personal sense of memory, these episodes, these events of our lives. We want to understand why the hippocampus is important. What, what makes this part of the brain so special that, that it is handling this huge amount of memory? Uh, and in general, if we think about memory as being kind of synaptic changes, there's synapses throughout the brain. Why, what is it about the synapses in the hippocampus that make them so special? So that's one of the biggest kind of scientific mysteries that we're going to try to uh, solve here in this chapter. One of the further consequences of the hippocampus being such an important uh, part of our memory system is that it is also way very high up on the on the hierarchy of cortical areas. And so it is the pinnacle of compression, this principle of compression that we've been focusing on. And so memories in the hippocampus are actually really, really abstract, really compressed versions of what happened in the real world. Our memories are therefore very susceptible to false memories. So in fact, <laughs> Morpheus never says, what if I told you, right? Just this meme itself tells us a self-referentially very uh, accurate story about memory, which is that memory is not accurate. Some of the other questions we're going to look at, you know, basically this fundamental question, what is memory? How does it work? How is it organized? Uh, and then more practical questions, how can we improve our memories? What can we do practically in daily life? And, you know, because memory is so important for everything in life, uh, especially in the academic context where you're trying to learn a bunch of new information, uh, 
techniques to improve memory have great practical importance. And then this basic question, is memory accurate? And we can see from Morpheus that in fact it's not, but we can learn a little bit more about exactly what drives inaccurate memories and understand the nature of memory accuracy a little bit better. And this also has very important practical implications for things like eyewitness testimony and uh, this previous trend of recovered memories, uh, repressed memories, and, and the use of those in a legal context.